Welcome back to the shop and it's getting a bit dark so I've had to turn the bloody light on. Sorry about the glare and all the rest of it. We'll have to put some there to get rid of it. Um, so someone asked me a question which was a really good question. They were saying why does... Um, is ring orientation, so when you put rings on your piston rings, is ring orientation that important and if so why? So this works with both two and four stroke. When you have in your manual it'll show you the top of your piston and it'll say you'll have a ring gap here and then over here you'll have a ring gap here and if it, you've got oil control rings a ring gap here obviously if it's a two stroke the pins um, denote exactly where or define exactly where your ring gap should be you can't really control them so the question is here is why is the orientation different for two strokes you know why do they bother doing that and in four strokes is it important to actually set these properly when you put your rings in Yes, it is. You know, the guy says, um, you know, you've said and people say that rings rotate. Obviously, two-stroke rings don't rotate because they, they shouldn't because they've got that pin there. Um, Four-stroke rings will rotate and all the rest of it. Hopefully, if you spread them apart, then if they rotate, hopefully they'll rotate the same. So these gaps are pretty much maintained. But why do we have this orientation thing going on? It's all about time, believe it or not. So basically, what you have is you have I'll do a massive exaggerated drawing here you have your piston here and then you'll have a ring gap here like so right like that and then you have the rest of your piston and you might have another ring gap here like so now let's just imagine for a second that these ring gaps are in the same place let's imagine we just forget what the manufacturers say or your manual says we put our two ring gaps, get rid of that, it makes it a bit confusing. We put our two ring gaps there. When you have a combustion event, the temperature rises, the pressure goes Whoa, like that, and that's what forces down your piston. And it goes, Whoa. I'll have to put that in a little stupid clippy video. <laughs> Sometimes I get excited, what can I say? And the gases will do this, and generally what happens is, is that, or what happens is, not generally, uh, you have a ring like this. And there is clearance all around it and the exhaust gases trickle down between your cylinder wall they come around the back here and they give your ring a boot from the back and a boot from the top because it's pressure like that so this is forcing your ring as usual it's forcing your ring into its groove which means it's sealing this bottom surface here and it is also pushing your ring out against the wall it is not the springiness that basically applies a force to your cylinder wall it is the exhaust gases getting behind the ring and giving in the shove outwards if you have a cylinder pressure of let's just say for shits and giggles because it's a nice number a thousand psi then there is a thousand psi pushing on the inside surface area of that piston now you can actually calculate this you find out how many square inches or whatever if you want to use bar pascals whatever you want to use um, you can work out how much pressure um, this is applied to this piston ring and how much that is pushing against your cylinder walls. Any road, obviously we have a gap. Why? Because of wear and because we need to literally push outwards. So we need some room to be able to flex. And you would never get a solid ring onto here in the first place. So our ring gaps, if you have um, your ring gaps aligned like this, then your exhaust gases, uh, your exhaust gases, your combustion gases, um, your high pressure combustion pro, uh, gases will literally just piss straight past your ring which means you've got um, quite a bit of blow by so what happens if we move this and just have a solid ring and on the back side of the ring there's a ring gap from the perspective of the gases they've got to go just say we've got a ring gap here and just say this is completely folded out so it's flat and then your other ring gap is here then what happens is, is your gases have to go like this down here and then basically worm their way around to actually have blow by well we've got time considerations here this just say takes 10 milliseconds to do but this could take 2 milliseconds so you are going to have a higher flow rate flowing through this open gap open gap idiot if we have that as a comparison 
a lot more gases because your flow rate are going to piss past these two rings that are aligned versus going this labyrinth around and this is in a sense in a way how labyrinth seals work to a degree um, but yeah if you have this path that it has to go down past one ring around the piston and then down to another gap that is going to take more time and obviously when you're racing along at 10,000 rpm these the, the timing the ignition events are absolutely minuscule so this does make a difference if you have your ring gaps aligned then you are going to get more blow by than if you have your ring gaps offset this is again in two strokes why they offset their ring gaps they just make sure that their pins and their ring gaps align where there's actually solid material all the way through the port instead of a big bloody hole so your rings don't basically stick out into the ports and break hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit